Thank you.
Hello and welcome to Sudbury Victory Center here in the beautiful city of Sudbury. Do you know that the Word of God is truly the greatest wealth that we can have here on this earth? If we let the Word do its work in our life, we will experience the fullness of life that Jesus promises us. So this morning I would like to continue my series, Red Letter Living, which looks at the words that Jesus himself spoke to educate the Jewish people at the time, and also to us today. And uh, I, I hope this message will be a blessing to your life, and I also hope that these red letters will challenge you into being all you can be in Christ. So if we go to John chapter 11, verse 17, all the way down to verse 44, that's gonna be our, our, our script for today. And um, we're gonna look at what's inside there. We're gonna, we're gonna check it out, it's really awesome. And I really believe that God has an awesome message for you. Starting at verse 17. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he was told that Lazarus, Lazarus had already been in the grave for four days. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Bethany was, was also a few miles down the road from Jerusalem. And many of the people had come to console, console Martha and Mary uh, in their loss. When Martha got the word that Jesus was coming, she sent to meet him she went to meet him 
But Mary stayed in the house, and then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. See what he said here? I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I've always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into this world from God. Then Mary returned. Then she returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So immediately, Mary went to him. Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed that she was going to Lazarus's grave to weep. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger, everybody see a deep anger because we're going to be looking at it. a deep anger welled up within him and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. And verse 35 says that Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? You get all these scoffers around. Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb. A cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. I want to stop here for a second. Now, here we see two stones or two rocks. You know, the Bible says that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. He's the stone. He's the rock. So it's a picture of a big rock versus a little rock. Okay, that little stone that, 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 that was, even though it was big in our eyes, but it was still little in Jesus' eyes. And he just says, you know, roll that stone aside. Roll that stone away. And um, I'm reminded of what a stone or, or a rock represents. That it represents a foundation. Even the enemy has a foundation. We have a foundation. Ours is life. And, and, and Jesus is, is that, that foundation of all things that, that pertains to life and, and joy and love and everything. And, um, but the devil, he also has a foundation. And it's pretty rock solid too. And, and I, got to, I have to give credit where credit is due in, in a sense. And I don't like to do that. But, you know, death that came from him way back when... That the death that came is his foundation. But Jesus' foundation is life. So here we have a picture of a little rock versus, a, uh, 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 versus the big rock. We have the power of God. The power is foundation. We know what foundation is. Jesus tells us not to build our foundation on the sand, but build it on the rock. So Jesus is that picture of a rock, of that solid foundation. And, it's a, and, and it's, here's just a picture I saw of... Uh, of Jesus, the rock, the big rock, telling that little, that little rock to just flip aside and roll away because I'm coming through. So look at, look at verse 39 again. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell must be terrible. Jesus answered, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing me. He hears you this morning if your heart is right. He hears you. You always hear me, he says in verse 42. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, 
Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in great clothes, his face wrapped in a headcloth. And then Jesus told him, unwrap him and let him go. Wow, what a story. What an amazing story. And there's a lot here, and I want to unpack that this morning right before you guys. I want to, I want to look at the whole scope of the story as much as we can do in, the, you know, in this time here. You know, the death of a loved one or a close friend can really take our emotions on a wild ride. You know, depending on the situation, emotion like, emotions like tears of sadness and, and tears of joy have a way of sneaking in and blending together in some strange way. The death of a believer comes to mind when I think about this. One moment you're, you're sad and, and, and you're weeping and then someone reminds you that he or she is in the presence of Jesus and now all of a sudden, tears of joy come upon you. You've seen that before. I've seen that before. People are, people are at a funeral and they're just weeping. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. You know, and it's so sad and, and all that stuff. But you know what? He's in heaven with Jesus and all of a sudden, you get these tears of joy. You know, the story is Lazarus' resurrection demonstrated to everyone back then and, and demonstrates to us today the absolute love and compassion that Jesus showed toward his friend Lazarus. His emotions were displayed for everyone to witness. The, you know, the shortest verse in the Bible tells us, and we just read it in verse 35, that Jesus wept. But not only did he weep, the Bible says, but he was angry. And in the Greek word to mean angry or anger, in this, in this case means to snort with anger. Now, I'm not going to try to snort with anger because it might, might, might get ugly or whatever. But just think of Jesus snorting with anger like just... <clears throat> I guess maybe that's what it is, <clears throat> with anger. And as I was studying this passage of Scripture, I, I asked myself, who is he angry at? I mean, these people are weeping at the loss of their friend Lazarus, and then all of a sudden we read, this, we read that Jesus was angry. Ah, I thought about that, then I got my answer. Jesus was angry at death, because death was the cause of pain and sorrow in all of his friends. It's the same with us today too. When, when a loved one gets cancer or any kind of disease that are, you know, terminal, you know, we get angry at the disease. We get, we get angry at what is destroying our loved ones. And, that, and that's why Jesus came and demonstrated his power so that, so that we can also demonstrate Jesus' healing power in the lives of others. You know the name Lazarus? Uh, the, the same Lazarus that... that, that Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. That's those same words, the same words that he spoke are still the same words that can come out of our mouths today. You know, there are still many Lazaruses out there. And it's for this reason the Spirit of Jesus dwells within us so that we can operate in his authority and do his works. Now, let's, let's look at Lazarus for a moment. The name Lazarus, and this is important, the name Lazarus comes with a meaning. You know, my name too comes with a meaning. They call him, if you read my name, if you look up, if you research Dennis, I know one place I researched, it says, glad, happy man. <laughs> That's who I am. I'm a glad and happy man. And Lazarus names, Lazarus, the name Lazarus means whom God helps. Whom God helps. And in this story, we see that meaning come to life. Okay? Jesus the Son of God was acting on behalf of his Father. And now Mary and Martha and Lazarus were, you got to understand that they were, that's how close they were. They were two sisters and a brother, and all three were very, very close friends of Jesus. And just to kind of put a bit of perspective to who they were, Mary was the one who poured the perfume on Jesus' feet and then wiped them with her hair. I can't do that because I got no hair. But, um, but Martha, and Martha was the one who complained to, uh, about Mary to Jesus because she wouldn't get help in her kitchen, you know, when Jesus was there. And she was at, she was at, Mary was at Jesus' feet, and Martha was in the kitchen working, complaining, you know. So that's, the, that's the, 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 the people that we're talking about here. Now, something very interesting about this story. Before Lazarus passed away, Jesus was given a message that Lazarus was sick. And even though Lazarus was a good friend, Jesus did not come to his rescue right away. Now, wow, that's, that's too much. 
You know, Lazarus is sick. Oh, let's go. No. See, he waited two days before he decided to go back and uh, to go see his friend Lazarus. But when Jesus arrived at the scene, Martha comes over and tells him that Lazarus is dead. Think about that. Now, here's a $64,000 64, question. Why didn't Jesus hurry up and go help Lazarus when he first found out that he was sick? Well, I thought about it. You know, and I come to the conclusion that he was, it's because he was doing the will of his father beyond the Jordan where he was at. It wasn't the will of the father for him to run over and to heal Lazarus of his sickness. Not at that time. The situation, this situation was allowed in order for God and for Jesus to get the glory. See, Lazarus has to go through something extreme and in this situation, death, in order for the power of God to be demonstrated over death. Do you ever notice that not every one of your prayers is answered instantaneously. Sometimes we have to wait for the answer to our prayers. But rest assured, the answer will come. Okay? They'll come. They'll come. There's a story, there's a story in the book of Daniel that explains when Daniel prayed, how come it took so long? But because it was, it took three weeks, 21 days, because there was a battle in the heavens. Okay? Sometimes things like that happen. But in this story, everything that accompanied death was going to be turned around because the one who was the resurrection and life would make all things right and that he would have a righteous anger over death and destroy that death in the life of his friend. Hallelujah. That's so good. That's so good what you did there, Jesus, back in that day. Tears of sadness would now become tears of joy as Lazarus came forth or would come forth by the power of God. So often we think that death is final. But if faith can arise in us as believers, we can mess up some funerals here and there. Imagine having a nickname the funeral crasher. <laughs> yeah, hey, here comes the funeral crasher. Yay! Praise God. I hope he's got faith today. You know, we, you know, we, we can turn tears of sadness into tears of joy. We have that ability in us. Does that sound radical? It sure does, but we serve a radical Jesus who brings life from death and who brings, he, he brings us healing and he brings us miracles in the likes we've never seen. See, these red letters, Lazarus come forth, Lazarus come forth, can inspire us to do the same. There are so many people out there who are bound and have lost their lives, so to speak. They're not physically dead, but that they're dead in all, in all different kinds of ways. But we can demonstrate the power of God by speaking words of authority into their lives in order to release them from what binds them. How many people do you know who are bound like Lazarus? How many people do you know who are spiritually dead? How many people do you know who have this stench about them even though they are alive? Is it me? I thought about this. <laughs> Is it me? Or is it starting to look like the walking dead out there? You know, do you realize that you could help them and release them from the situation? Do you realize that you too can say, roll that stone away? Because the stone, the big stone is living within you. You can tell that little stone of death that seals death. Get out of the way. See, no matter how much their sin stinks, no matter how much their bondage smells, no matter how much rot there is in their lives, there is a God. There is a Son of God. There is a Holy Spirit inside of you who can save, heal, and deliver. The one who resurrects and the one who gives life indwells in you. And because of this, you are now what I call an agent of change. In this story, the change began with the display of love and compassion toward people who lost their friend and was then followed by a righteous anger that ripped through the gates of hell and took back what belonged to him. You see, I want you to understand this. Now, I want you to repeat this after me. Life belongs to Jesus. Repeat that. Life belongs to Jesus. You see, we have a wonderful mandate in our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been given the privilege and the honor to operate in the same power that Christ operated in. To me, that is 
absolutely mind blowing, you know, and that's the reality of our calling because Jesus gave his everything. We can now have everything. He tells us in Matthew chapter five in his sermon on the Mount that we can be happy and blessed in any circumstances of life because the king and his kingdom takes care of his children. He takes care of you. His kingdom is our kingdom and his kingdom is love and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Or actually in Romans 14, uh, 14, 17, it says his kingdom is righteousness, peace, righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's, I believe it's uh, Romans 14, 17. See, his peace for you is to make sure nothing in your life is missing or broken. In Christ, you may not understand it all. You know, we'll probably never understand it all throughout our whole lives. We never will, actually, while we're all here on this earth, but we'll begin to understand that way more when we get to heaven. But nevertheless, you can have it all. Hallelujah. You know, the question this morning is, do you want it? And I ask you, do you want it this morning? You know, you can have it all if you want. Just ask him to come into your heart and live his life through you. It's not very hard. Tell Jesus you're sorry and turn away from your lifestyle of sin because believe, believe in your heart that he is the son of God and, and believe that God had raised him from the dead and that's it. You will be saved. Do you believe that? Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for those powerful red letters, oh God, where he says, roll that stone away and Lazarus come forth. Hallelujah. Those are words of power, words of authority that you've given us. Words that can change lives of others. Hallelujah. As we, as we um, allow you to work in our lives, as we allow you to, to, to work your works in us, oh God. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us I pray that this message would resonate in our spirits and our hearts that, Lord God, we can be an agent of change in a place, oh God, where in, in a time in this world where, oh God, there's so much change that needs to happen in the lives of people because people are really messed up. And Lord God, but you spoke those words, Lazarus, come forth. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we can speak that in Jesus' name in the lives of of our loved ones and friends and others, oh God, in the name of Jesus, amen. Well, thank you for joining us and um, hope to see you next week. God bless in Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah.